it's me. So, it's been a while since we've actually talked. Um, I'm here to review a movie that... Well, I haven't done a movie review in a while, so I might as well just do one. Um, I'm here to review a movie called Godzilla Minus One. You know I'm a huge Godzilla fan. I really have so much respect for the character. Um, I've been watching it since probably like... Probably since I started my channel almost 10 years ago. Yes, I'm repping the long hair. I don't know why I brought that up, but okay. I'm quickly looking over at my screens. Um, if you're wondering why I'm actually looking up so high um, every single time, it's because there's thunder and lightning at the moment. I'm not sure if the power might go out, so that's why I'm doing this like, review. Oof. Jesus. I'm doing this review now because, I don't know, I just wanted to. Anyway, um, Godzilla Minus One. Re There's thunder and lightning. It's, it's very, very scary. But, um, oh my god. But, um, Godzilla Minus One. What's, it's a very special movie. Because it's something that doesn't feel like it, it has been, it was like released now. It feels like it was released 20 years ago. It feels like a movie that is... I can't even think <laughs> at the moment. It's been a while since I've actually done one of these on a, my phone on something and with shitty lighting coming at my face. But um, Godzilla Minus One, like, it, it's... It's a masterpiece, I'll say it. It's, it's a masterpiece. I have nothing else to describe it as. The story is rich. It's sad. It's beautiful. It has great moments. It's got really bad ones. Not like in a, in a good way bad moments. Like, you know, the character, the character of, um, I think, if I remember his name, that was a lightning strike. The character of Shikishima. I'm not sure if I said that correctly, but, um, Shigashima is fantastic. It, he's a kamikaze pilot who fails at his job, who, if you don't know what a kamikaze pilot is, it's basically, a, it's basically a suicide pilot, basically drives a plane with bombs inside their, pl inside the plane, interiors, and like smashes into something you're basically meant to die but he wasn't so in on the whole dying thing i mean yeah i guess i would be in the same boat too so he gets on an island specifically odo island again i don't think i said that right either and he says this plane's malfunctioning and the people there the people there um who mechan who are the mechanics on the plane say, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this plane, buddy. I think you got... I think, are you lying to us? And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere comes a giant animal, like this almost dinosaur-looking pe looking creature that what the people on the island call Godzilla. Godzilla looks different in this part of the scene, but he gets better as the time goes on. And... God, this video is already... I can already see a sharp decline in viewership. I'll tell you what happened to me afterwards, okay? Because it's been a whole 12 months. Um, because I'm, I'm going to do like... A, actually, I should totally do a channel update after this review. I'm doing a channel update after the review. After the review, because I've been away for so long. My bedtime is at except for 11.30. Yeah, because it's 12. Actually, no, is it? No, it's 11.29. I thought it was 12 o'clock. Um, yeah, that's right. It's 11.29 p.m. What of it? I I'm allowed to go to sleep in my own time. I'll just get worse health from it. Well, I might just, I'm might just i just going to get a little bit of dying later. What, if, everybody dies, okay? Everybody dies. One thing I, I forgot to notice, like, forgot, failed to mention, is that this movie is set in, in like, right after World War II, so like 1945 to 1947, that's where it's 
primarily taking place. It primarily takes place in 1947. Whoa. That was something. Jesus. Cool. Anyway, so I'm actually getting scared now that the that the power might go out. It may be entertaining for you guys, but it's not entertaining for me because I'm gonna have to pick up this review tomorrow. And to be honest, I don't know why I don't want to do it. I might just not do it. Wow, that's picked up spikingly on the on the thing here. Um, Godzilla, God, Godzilla here in this movie is terrifying, like nothing that you would ever think of. Like Shin Godzilla. Like, hang on a minute. Can you just go past here for a second. Like Shin Godzilla was terrifying, as you see on the cover here. On the cover here, he was terrifying, but he, I mean, to be honest, it might be terrifying, but because he's so, and plus he's smaller too, this movie, he, it's a smaller Godzilla as well, the fact that he's smaller kind of makes him more terrifying, if, if you get my drift here, because it feels like you can, like, his eyes can easily lock on to any specific human being. And because he's so small, makes him more like a personal threat. If you know what I mean. But um, but that but Godzilla himself is fantastic. I like the design of it, even though it's full CGI, which I kind of missed the suitmation. But this one, I think, was also full CGI. But. Yeah, like, there is actually some discussion online which one's better, Shin Godzilla or Godzilla Minus One. I will say, Godzilla Minus One, I mean, Shin Godzilla has really good moments. It's a fantastic film. But the thing where edges Godzilla Minus, where Godzilla Minus One edges Shin Godzilla here compared to this one, which is something I never thought I'd ever see in a Godzilla film ever, The humans are interesting. That's right. They have relatable human beings, which is something that's mind-blowing to me in a Godzilla film. I never go and see watch a Godzilla film for humans. I always go and see it for Godzilla, you know? The only time when I do is when I watch the 54 one, you know, because that one actually had semi interesting human characters and the ideology and a allegory for um I, th I don't think I said that correctly no I might have I might have gotten dumber since the last time you see me but um like a hidden meaning of nuclear war and destruction coming from a place that witnesses powers firsthand um that's the only place where I actually go and see it but other than that like I don't go to s go and see Godzilla with um with human people in mind, but I guess in some cases humans are needed because it need because you can't have an entire movie without dialogue and monster fighting. I guess that's I guess humans are necessary, but now that I think, but like the monsterverse didn't help in that one didn't help in that department, like, especially the first Godzilla movie, like, again, that's right here, especially the first Godzilla film by Gareth Edwards, by, by legendary Warner Brothers, um, this was a great attempt, a great film, but it wasn't Godzilla, in the words of James, of James from Cinemassacre, it just wasn't Godzilla, it wasn't made from Toho, but, it's probably the closest we're ever going to get as a really good American Godzilla film. For some reason, I immediately thought, what if I directed a Godzilla film? I mean, that's one of the points I'll bring up in the in the channel in the channel update vlog that I've actually been that I'm going to put into this. I think on top of this video, which I'll probably do in the morning. 
because it looks like the lightning's getting stronger. But, but anyway, the interesting characters in this film make this film the best of the year. It's my favorite film of the year, which I never had that on my cards in this movie. I bet nobody, not even the hardcorest of Godzilla fans, well, the hardcorest, the most hardcore of Godzilla fans ever had this movie topping the list. But 2023 has a very interesting way of twisting the arm, you know, because here's the thing, right? I was all ready to give Oppenheimer, you know, the gift wrapping stuff. Put it in a gift, nice box, send it, send it over. That's my movie of the year. Then Godzilla came out of the ocean, dragged the present out of my hands, cut off the ribbon, opened up the box and said, Jared, you got room for one more? Absolutely, I do. Godzilla is my best mo movie of the year, which I've never done before. I have never surrendered best movie of the year in December. The only time when I did was probably when Star Wars The Force Awakens came out, but that was back when I was a kid. And that was when that was when there was nothing coming out in 2015. I don't remember anything from 2015 except from Star Wars The Force Awakens. Maybe when I do later on, if I do go back and see it, but that's it. Godzilla Minus One is probably the first one that I've actually ever witnessed as, you know you know, taking it right off. And I've got a couple of movies to go. Like, I didn't have... Like, I need to go and see The Boy and the Heron, which is another one. And also, one I didn't want to see, but then Warner Brothers Universal came out to me and was like, hey, you want to see this film? We've got some extra tickets. And I was like, all right, because I... And the film in question is Aquaman The Lost Kingdom. I didn't want to see it, but I'm not going to deny a free movie, especially in IMAX 3D. Anyway, I am going to see Godzilla Minus One a second time because it's just so good. The characters are so rich. The The story between Noriko and Kaiochi, Koichi, Kaiochi, their story is so, is so, like, so rich and so strong that it overrides any movie this year, in my opinion. I mean, Oppenheimer was great. But this movie was an hour was an hour less and it had monster action and also very interesting characters. Especially and the irony of this, which I've been seeing all over the internet, is that the irony that because this has already been rated as better than Oppenheimer, because I think Oppenheimer was eight point four stars on IMDB and then Godzilla was 8.5 and people would say the irony of it because the the one that it just beat was the one about building the bomb and sending it over to Japan and then the one that beat it was the one that was the aftermath of the bomb and why the Japanese people suffered and it was a and it was a hidden was an was it like allegory ideology of nuclear warfare and and it's indestructible force when it when the blast comes out and I will say but that's an epic irony that's all like, epic irony that's not even make any sense I, that doesn't even make any sense either irony but the irony of that is just too good to pass up anyway I will say the shots in this film as well are just amazing and also, I need to point out that this movie was made for under $15 million. I thought it was just $15 million, that's it. But then Takashi Yamazaki, the director of the film, the writer of the film, and the visual effects supervisor of the film, came out and said, I wish it were that much. So it's under. And the, f the film, the shots of this film are beautiful. This is a slap in the face that Hollywood needed. After so much shit that came out this year, Hollywood got their right whack with Japan. Now they're dominating the box office, and I think it's about time for something like this. Even, like, even the other characters, like, you know, the sailor and the doctor and the kid from that boat, they're all very memorable. When, 
when uh, Kaichi takes over, takes on as a minesweeper, trying to shoot down. There's one one particular scene where he takes on a, where he's a minesweeper, and he has to shoot down all the mines, and then Godzilla appears, and he has to they have to use their brain to detonate the mines on Godzilla, and even Kaichi shoots the gun when the when the um, mine goes into his mouth, it blows off one part of his head, and it regenerates like Wolverine almost, and goes on its merry way, and then an American warship, or I think, actually, no, it's not an American warship, it's a Japanese warship that the Americans allowed, and they went down, they went down to help them out, but then Godzilla made his nuclear blast, his nuclear blast, and blew it up, and that was beautiful. Godzilla's atomic breath in this film is amazing, it's an actual nuclear bomb, Literally, an actual nuclear bomb. I've never been as invested in a Godzilla film as I have been. Every character in this film feels justified to be there. Which is something I thought I'd never say in a Godzilla film. And this is coming from a Godzilla fan. I've almost got every single film on DVD. And I'm definitely going to pick this up on DVD if or when it comes out. Like, on DVD. I've I've got, like collections here, I've got, I've even got the first American Godzilla film, I've even got, like, I, I've tipped over some DVDs, I've even got the book, the, um, the guide here, which I think Toho needs to, um, is gonna have to revamp this one, because this came out when? Last year? 2022, this came out 2022, so this is gonna have to be revamped, and, and with minus one on here. And for those who don't know what minus one means, it's basically after the atomic bombs went off in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they, Japan was essentially zero, and then Godzilla appears while they're rebuilding, and then it they go minus one. That's literally the... Um, it's pretty simple, but anyway. But that's something I can't get over, is the character. The character development of Koichi and all the other characters are banding together to try and destroy Godzilla and trying to kill him with science which is probably okay I guess but they did it in a very smart way which I won't reveal because I think I spoiled this movie enough but anyway as I said before, Godzilla Minus One has to be seen in a theater. It needs to be seen as much as possible. As I said, I'm going to see it again in IMAX. Um, so, I'm, I want, so, as far, because I've seen the box office reports, I've seen everything. And it brings it brings so much warm like warmth to my heart that sees God that I see Godzilla doing so well, because I mean Shin Godzilla did pretty well, but that was mostly in Japan, and the domestic box office in America actually beat Japanese as the Japan's box office, which is unheard of. We've never seen that before. Probably since like we've never seen a a foreign film pop off this much since I think Jet Li's. 2004 film Hero. I might have got that one wrong, but we'll move. We move off of that. But anyway, I think my camera might run out of storage. So luckily, it doesn't look like my power will go out. Um, luckily. So my rating for this movie is 97%. Um, pretty much the same as the tomato meter. It's an A+, A++. It is my favorite movie of the year. I'm already declaring it because I've got The Boy and the Heron. I think, I think I've got Napoleon. Then I've got Aquaman. <laughs> Where's the laughter on that one? And I'm thinking about seeing poor things after I saw how it was shot. But Godzilla Minus One, go, go see it if you haven't seen it yet. And let me know what you think of it, because for me, it's probably the best Godzilla film, and it rivals the 54 Godzilla film.
in my opinion. So, let me know what you think down below. Hit the like on this button. Hit the like button. Hit the like on this button. It's been a while since I've done this. Sorry. Hit hit the like. Hit the like button, and hit subscribe while you're there. Because it's it's only a little bit. It's only like a bit. It's a bit. It's it's only a couple of inches away from the like button. I mean, it'd be nice if you hit subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And hit that bell. Give it a little bit of a ring while you're there. Anyway, this is Jared, and I'm out, I guess.